Welcome to week 21 of my pregnancy. I am super excited and happy that we are halfway through my pregnancy already. I mean, everything is just going by so quickly, but I am just so grateful and so thankful for each and every single day that passes by. Now, from my last update, I left off saying that I had a couple of upcoming appointments and an ultrasound. So I'm here today to update you guys on how that went. If you are new to my channel, I am expecting baby number seven, and this little one is due April 2022. So based off of my personal dates that I was going off of, I would be technically turning 21 weeks tomorrow, um, but when I went to my midwife appointment, they gave me the results back from the dating ultrasound that I had at 15 weeks, and according to that, they changed my due date to um, the 11th of April. So now my weeks turn over or change on Mondays. So today I would be 21 weeks and one day um, at the time of this recording. Now I was super excited to meet the midwife um, to the point where I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the day to come. I had like ants in my pants. And so the midwife clinic or office is quite um, a bit away from me. I would say it's about like 30 minutes away, if I'm not mistaken. And so that day, I was running a bit late, but thankfully I made it there on time. And the office is such a beautiful office. It's such a welcoming and um, calming atmosphere so I was really excited about that um, they had um, some safety measures in place in terms of you had to remove the mask that you were wearing and put on one of their uh, medical masks that they had at, but up at the front after sanitizing your hands and whatnot and then they would call you in and so when I went in um, I was just excited to get the appointment started the midwife there was super nice and usually during your first prenatal visit with a midwife or OBGYN, they basically go over your medical history and if you've been pregnant before, they go over your pregnancy and your birthing history. And since this is baby number seven for me, that took some time to go through each and every single pregnancy and then every detail for each and every single birth um but it needed to be done so we did that and then she went over my results of my blood work she said everything looked a-okay um except for my um red blood cells i think it is your i think it has to do with your hemoglobin but it's pretty high and I mean it's been high every single pregnancy and I never really like gone to the doctor to investigate further as to why it's high but I remember um with my last pregnancy they had me go over to labor and delivery and I saw the on-call obstetrician there and she didn't have any concerns with it she said it has no impact in terms of how you labor or after birth so um I don't know. I don't know why it's high. I think the concern usually is if it's low, then you'll have some complications during labor or during your pregnancy, I believe. Um, but mine's super high. So if you guys have any clues or any ideas as to what's that about, leave a comment down below and let me know. Um, but other than that, everything else came back okay. Um, my ultrasound results also came back okay as well baby was measuring a little bit ahead and that's why they boost or bumped up my due date and to the 11th of april when it was before the, or the 13th of april which i was going off of base of my dates and i'm pretty confident and sure about my dates but whatever we'll go with what they say so after going over all the results, she also stated to me that my results for rubella was missing. And so she has to do a repeat testing of that. Um, basically in the blood work, they cover a whole bunch of things. I know they cover like um, HIV and then they check to see 
your blood type, and then they, they, my doctor, or the walking doctor that I saw, the one who requested the blood work, did like a whole profile. So they said they were able to see, sorry, uh, my iron levels, how my sugar has been for the past three months, um, all your minerals and vitamins and all those things that are in your body. They, they check the level for all those things. And so it was a pretty in-depth, detailed um, blood test. And I thought that was quite interesting. And um, so I, she had to do a repeat, repeat of my rubella testing, which was what I thought was really cool is that they were able to take blood there at the midwife clinic. When I had midwives before, they always sent you to a blood lab. And every obstetrician that I've ever had, they also always sent you to the blood lab. But there, they were able, the midwife herself was able to take the blood. Um, and then she also offered me um, the option to do one genetic testing, which was called MMS. And it will test for certain birth defects um, and other things like Down syndrome and so forth without having it combined with an ultrasound. So she offered that to me and it's covered by OHIP, which is the um, the medical health care here in Ontario. And so I did that. She did the blood work for that. And um, I haven't gained any weight so far this pregnancy at my weigh-in. And also she needs to check my blood pressure. Now, for my last update, I told you guys that my blood pressure was supposedly acting up. She checked it the first time manually, and she was like, mm, I should check it with the machine. I quickly asked her what she thought it was, and um, I believe she said it was like 146 over 98. So she checked it with the machine afterwards, and it was... Um, 143 over 96. So she said to me, because of my blood pressure, I wouldn't be able to continue care with a midwife. I have the option to share care, uh, meaning that I would be able to have some appointments with my midwife and have some appointments with the obstetrician, but the midwives would not be able to deliver the baby. Um, and then I just broke down and started bawling like a baby in the office in front of this lady. And she probably thought I was nuts. But I was just really, really hoping that I would be able to just be under the care of a midwife. I just overall preferred that whole experience. But I am putting my trust in the Lord that he knows what's best for the baby and I. And so um, someone recommended this particular obstetrician that's in my area and so I asked if I can be referred to her and she said no problem so I don't think I'm gonna do the share care thing I think it's just too many different appointments too many things going on especially the fact that I have six other children we're homeschooling there's you know mommy and wife duties that I have to do so I think I'm just gonna stick with just being under the care of an obstetrician so I'll just have them transfer everything to them um but, you know, it took me some time to get over the fact that I wouldn't be able to deliver baby number seven with a midwife. But now I'm at a place where I'm okay with it. I know now that I can prepare myself mentally and spiritually and physically to give birth to this baby um, in a hospital environment with um, an obstetrician who has been recommended to me. And... Um, I did a lot of research on her, and I don't know, my spirit just takes to her, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited to meet her. I think I have my first obstetrician appointment mid-December, so I'll update you guys after that, um, but the midwife has bumped up my aspirin, so now I take two 81 milligrams of aspirin at night, and... Um, she didn't say anything about the blood pressure medication, so I'm, I'm still not taking that. Um, but other than that, that's basically my whole update in terms of what happened at my midwife appointment. So they gave me a requisition to do my anatomy scan, and I did my anatomy scan at 20 weeks. And um, that experience was <laughs> hilarious because... Um, 
I just did not drink the required amount of water. I learned from my first ultrasound this pregnancy that I just can't. I can't drink one liter of water. It's a lot on me physically. And so I drank one bottle of water and um, made my way to the appointment. And um, the baby was so low, super, 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 super low to the point where the ultrasound tech had me like literally pull everything down as low as possible. And so she had the ultrasound probe literally over like my pubes. Like that's how low the baby was. That was the only way that she could get any sort of measurements. And so she was mentioning to me that I may have to come back for a repeat because there was some images that didn't come out as clear because of the position of baby. Um, but she, baby was pretty much cozy and so cooperative she was like trying to rush and get all the measurements done because she's like the position that your baby is once that baby starts moving i won't be able to get anything done but baby was resting and super super cute um she didn't really give me any details so the details from this ultrasound i'm gonna have to wait until i see either the obstetrician or the midwives but um, she, she asked me towards the end of the ultrasound if I wanted to know the gender of the baby. And I declined in the most saddest way ever because I really, really wanted to know. I was like, this is my moment to know the gender. And um, I said, you know what? I'm just going to stick to my original plans of keeping this gender a surprise. And I just said, no, you know what? Um, I don't want to know. <laughs> She's like, okay. She's like, I think I have a pretty good idea of what it was. But you know what? She kind of slipped up. And I don't know um, if this is her way of slipping up because people do say he or she um, just randomly, depending on, you know, the time and the situation when they're talking about a baby. But she said he twice during the ultrasound. So... Does that mean anything? I don't know, but um, I don't have any other opportunity to find out this the gender of this baby until birth. And so I'm kind of glad that I was able to get over that kind of hurdle of temptation. <laughs> and now I just have no choice but to wait. Um, but other than that, I've been feeling so amazing. Um, this part of my pregnancy has been the best part of my pregnancy. Um, the only issues that I have right now is I had nerve issues, but um, some days are worse than others. Um, literally some days I just cannot walk or stand. Like it's very difficult. I've been managing with um, soak in my tub and um, some massages at home. Um, but other than that, that's the only major issue that I have. Um, I'm enjoying each and every single day, each and every single moment. Um, and it's, I don't know what it is. I guess because I'm more aware of my body. It's just, I don't know. It's more um, fascinating to me, this pregnancy, in terms of how baby grows, how baby moves, and all those things. I think I was just so busy with all my other pregnancies. Like, I never really had a time or had the time to just sit down and just think about how life is formed and how the baby develops and appreciate every single little kick and every little single hiccup or whatever it is. Um, so this is a super, super cute um, moment in my pregnancy. I will insert a clip, or not a clip, but if I will insert a picture of baby at the end of this video and then you guys can take another guess of baby's gender um so far my husband thinks baby is a girl and i'm trying not to guess anything honestly because i don't want to favor one over the other i uh, i just really just want to know what the gender is so i can just put a name to the face um but we are getting ready to start buying baby things which is also super excited and um, I'm feeling the baby move more and more. And um, that's it. So I will show you what my bump is looking like. So I'm wearing uh, a pretty baggy sweater today because it's cold here. Um, but um, this is what the bump looks like with my skirt. Um, this is what my bump looks like at 21 weeks. 
I don't know if you guys can clearly see because I'm wearing black, but hopefully you guys can get some sort of imagery. Um, I don't know. Did my bump grow? What do you guys think? So that's the end of today's video. Um, that's all I really have to update you guys on at this point. I will do another update video after um, my next midwife or obstetrician appointment. I just want to quickly ask that you guys keep me and this little one in your prayers. Um, I just really hope and pray that we enjoy and really connect with this obstetrician um, that we got referred to and um, that everything will continue to go well for the remaining part of our pregnancy. I mentioned that me and my husband have been really loving roast beef sandwiches this pregnancy and so this is just the Kirkland roast beef um, I guess it's deli meat right it's deli meat and I know a lot of people are like should you have deli meat when you're pregnant should you not have deli meat when you're pregnant and um, I know that if you heat it up that it's safe to eat so what I usually do is I just Heat it up or fry it up a little bit in um, a frying pan. Then we put it into the oven. I'll cut up, cut the sub bun in half, open it up, put the heated up pieces of um, beef on one side, and I'll put some cheese. Just like how Quiznos or Subways heats up their meat in the uh, toaster thing that they put in the oven. That's the kind of same concept. So that is what we're having today for lunch. Um, so yeah, I'll let you guys see um, how we do it up for our, our lunch in this house. This is what I meant by heating up the meat in a frying pan prior to um, putting it in the oven to get toasted. So this is all the meat heated up and I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the um buns that we have over there and get those into the oven some of my kids decided that they wanted to have some <laughs> sub sandwiches as well so um i will cut the two on the end in half and they can have half a sub and um me and my husband will have a whole sub but this is what i meant by heating up the meat first and then i'll cut the be the bread in half put cheese on one side and then the meat on the other side and then I will close the oven and let that toast for a bit let the cheese melt and that way the meat is heated up at a safe temperature this is what it looks like out of the oven toasted the cheese is melted and then I will just throw some lettuce and some condiments on it and call it a day thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.